Hello everyone, welcome back to the Tarika Foundation podcast. I'm your host Poonam and I have Diane Tillman with me today. She is the primary author of more than 20 Living Values Education books and the co-founder of the Living Value Education. She is a licensed educational psychologist, marriage and family therapist, values education authority, and a meditator. We are talking about the Living Values Education. I would request Diane to just quickly remind us uh, about the Living Values Education theoretical model. She explained that model to us in detail during the last episode, but I would request her to remind us quickly. Diane? Wonderful, Poon. And the reason I understand why we're doing this is that you did some innovative work with your family and have been having fun with them working on this model. That's wonderful. The model is very simple and yet profound. (laughs) It essentially says whatever behavior someone has, be it positive or negative, if we treat them in such a way that they feel loved, respected, valued, understood, and safe, then they move towards their potential. And we can create an atmosphere of peace and respect or cooperation and caring and excellence, whatever your family or your organization wants to do. And then all of that is above in the upper half of the circle. And below the circle is when we treat people, be they have positive or negative behavior, if we treat them in such a way that they feel inadequate, afraid, hurt, shamed, or unsafe, then they react to that. They feel bad or they feel hurt, they feel depressed or they get angry and feel violent. So they move away from their potential. So one of the models we have, or one of the sayings we have in living values is stay above the line. Absolutely, Dan. Thank you so much. And you're right. I did introduce this model to my family. And I will tell you a quick win. Uh, my daughter, she's 20 years old, and uh, she's right now in uh, her second year of college. So she did uh, work with one of the professor assistants. So she was like, she did not get the grades she was expecting and she was a little upset and wanted to talk to that uh, professor assistant. Um, but she came to me and she asked me, mom, how do I talk to this assistant professor? Um, so, uh, and she was, my daughter was full of negativity. You know, this professor is born, not, not born and raised here. She doesn't understand. Then I told my daughter, if you really want a positive outcome out for this conversation, you need to first, you know, show that respect and go with the clean state, no judgment. Understand your assistant professor perspective. So I told her, you know, if your assistant professor is feeling hurt, you will see the positive outcome. So my daughter did apply this model during her conversation and within few minutes, um, the conversation was done and my daughter was very happy because she did get the positive outcome. So I'm very glad I learned this model from you and introduced it to my family. And I'm also applying it in my everyday conversation with my son uh, and I do see he's more open to me. He feels uh, comfortable sharing his feelings, and we are having that better bonding, and I must say that cooperation. So thank you so much. Congratulations, Puna. You're amazing. Instant application. What are you going to teach us next? (laughs) Since you asked. Living values. Yes, we have our theoretical model and all the a solid educational basis uh, upon which this program is built. 
Living Values also has Living Values Activities books. So these LVE Activities books provide hundreds of activities on values. And so we do values on peace and respect and love and tolerance, on simplicity and caring for the earth and our oceans, on honesty. And there's a wide variety of materials. There's reflective exercises so that young people can think about what kind of world they want to create, what a peaceful world would look like. And there's exercises where they can feel the value, so feel the love, feel the peace, so that they can learn to self-regulate better. And really put into their mind, into the self, the qualities they want at that moment in time. There is anti-bullying activities. There is development of social and emotional skills, because these are essential if people want to look for value. But there's also activities to get them to look at the effect of value. And so the one I was thinking of sharing today was mind mapping. And I love our mind mapping exercises because we ask the young people, usually starting around age, but you can do this with anyone. And we pick a value or have them pick a value. And um, then mind map that value on the opposite of the value. And then afterwards, They take what they have experienced and they create a poem or make up a song together with small groups. And so it's really fun. But when you're mind mapping, if you were the instructor, the teacher, or you're facilitating your family doing this, you could draw a circle on the board and put your value inside. So... One time I did this with a bishop from Kenya who had attended an international training in England. And we, he chose honesty. And so we did honesty. And then on the other side, we did dishonesty and corruption. So first you look at how do you feel when you're honest? What happens in the family when there's honesty and love with each other? What happens when there's honesty in businesses and honesty in healthcare and education in society as a whole? And then we did the other part, what happens when there's dishonesty? What happens when people don't keep their promises, when they lie to you? What happens in the store when you're cheated? What happens in a healthcare system where some people, and they talked about, you don't supply any of the answers. They supply the answers. So they'll talk about things that happen in the country, such as people taking some of the resources um, from education, from government, or from healthcare systems, and then the effects that that has on the populace. And On each side of this mind map, you can draw pictures of what they're describing. So you can see that when there's honesty, there's prosperity, there's trust. Uh, People like going to that store. Those people are doing well. Versus the other side, when people feel that they don't have enough. And the bishop, I think he was from the Anglican Church, He said, you know, I should do this with the government. This would really help. But I also remember doing it with a group of section leaders in a refugee camp in Thailand. And they really realized, these adults, what was happening in their society. And they spent 45 minutes telling me what happens when you're honest or dishonest. And I'm writing it all up on the board so they can see it, and somebody's writing in Korean below my English, and we're drawing pictures. And what we ended up was with this huge map 
And you could see where there's peace on one side and there's violence and hopelessness and despair and finally anarchy and war. So it was a very, very interesting session. I realize it isn't like that in most countries, but even so, even if you live in a very safe community, um, I know that a neighbor once came to me once and he said, I don't know what to do. My son stole some money. And this is in a you know, middle class, upper middle class area. And this parent was quite concerned. He said, I just don't know what to do. Do I talk to him about it and punish him? So we went through some things to do. And um, I ended up suggesting that he talk to his son about why he felt honesty was important. And as he put it in his words, when he came back to talk to me, he had told his son, honesty is the mark of a man. He said he hadn't had such a good conversation with his son for a couple of years that they actually sat and talked for a couple of hours. And so even, you know, where it seems you do have an honesty in the society, there's so many influences nowadays and sometimes stealing a little bit can be a temptation. But it's very important for people to look at wider ramifications. Um, and see what happens to the whole society and to see the damage done to many people when there is not integrity. So one of the beauties of this, as I said, is that the young people are supplying the answers. And you can do this with peace. You can do this with love. And then afterwards, you divide them into small groups. And you give them the time to create, just 10, 15 minutes, to create a song, um, to create a poem, to create a rap about what they learned. And it's so fun when they create it, you know. So I thought I'd tell you about that because it's a fun thing to do. I'm so impressed, Dan. Like with one technique, mind mapping, you know, people can do that exercise within their family, in bigger community, and the nation, as you were explaining. So I'm certainly going to do this fun exercise with my family. I would love uh, to get them involved and do it on peace uh, because everybody might have their own definition of peace. And as you explained, ask them to make two sides. One is like peace, other side is violence or peacelessness. And then let them brainstorm and then we'll collect, come as a family together and uh, do that fun exercise of making a poem or, you know, a song. I'm so glad I learned this technique uh, from you today. And I'm sure my audience are also getting great ideas to do such activities um, with their family. So I'm um, very thankful to you for joining us today. We will get to learn more in upcoming episodes. Thank you so much. Thank you, Poonam. As always, it's a pleasure to be with you. Talk to you next time. Wonderful. You are listening to Mindful, Beautiful, and Thriving, a podcast series by Tharika Foundation. As part of our youth series, we will be releasing new episodes every week, so make sure to continue to check those out. We hope you enjoyed this podcast, and thank you so much for listening.